Hello everyone. It's that time of year again. Everyone's coughing. Everyone has a fever. So if you suspect your patient might have pneumonia, how do you figure out? Is it influenza, COVID pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia? And how do you decide on treatment? Take a look at this. This is a chest x-ray of a 35-year-old man who has had a fever and a dry cough for the last seven days. But since yesterday, he's been feeling short of breath when walking up the stairs and he noticed that his dry cough got worse. When we examine him, we notice that his O2 saturation is 93%. What would you say this is? I mean, 7 days of fever. In most uncomplicated viral respiratory tract infections, most adults will not have fever at all, or maybe for the first couple of days. Even in influenza and COVID-19, if they are uncomplicated, there should be signs of improvement after 4 to 5 days maximum, right? So, we can all agree that 7 days is a little bit too long. Not to mention that our patient's O2 saturation is abnormally low. So let's take a look at the x-ray once again. There are bilateral opacities, mostly in the lower lobes and the periphery, just beneath the pleura, while the upper portions seem to be spared. Now, this is a typical case of COVID-19 pneumonia. The course of illness is highly characteristic of COVID, so this gradual onset with seemingly unimpressive symptoms, but then toward the end of the first week of symptoms, the patient starts to experience shortness of breath, worsening dry cough, maybe even worsening fever, and then in some cases it progresses to acute respiratory failure. The x-ray is typical as well. Remember this. Bilateral diffuse opacities, both interstitial infiltrates and signs of consolidation. Most pronounced in the lower portions of the lungs and on the periphery just beneath the pleura, while the top portions are usually spared. You can see another example here. This is even better. Bilateral, more or less symmetrical, worse in the bottom and the periphery. Okay, now imagine the same patient with the same story, only we find this on chest x-ray. As opposed to subtle, bilateral, symmetrical infiltrates, you see a marked asymmetry and a thicker, more dense infiltrate, which is a sign of consolidation. There is also pleural effusion, so this looks like bacterial pneumonia, more specifically lobar pneumonia, which means only some lobes are affected while others are clear. This is an example of bacterial bronchopneumonia with multifocal patch infiltrates where the borders are not that clear, but you can still see asymmetry. This marked asymmetry on chest x-ray is also reflected on auscultatory findings. So, when you auscultate the lungs of a patient with lobar pneumonia, usually you will be able to pinpoint exactly where the problem is. While in COVID pneumonia, on the other hand, these auscultatory abnormalities will usually be more subtle but symmetrical and again, more pronounced on the bottom while the top portions of the lungs will be spared. And again, notice this course of illness, this seemingly unimpressive symptoms in the beginning and then deterioration later on. Both COVID and bacterial pneumonia can do this. So how can you tell the difference? Well, as you can see, chest x-ray can help us a lot, but there are cases when even x-ray will be inconclusive, so we need additional help from our lab tests. In COVID pneumonia, usually you will see a normal leukocyte count and in differential, you might see lymphopenia. By the way, the degree of lymphopenia correlates with disease severity. So very low lymphocyte count is a marker of poor prognosis. Only in the most severely ill patients, the ones being treated in the ICU, you can sometimes find leukocytosis with neutrophilia. On the other hand, in bacterial pneumonia, leukocytosis with neutrophilia is the norm. Then CRP. In COVID pneumonia, CRP usually isn't that impressive. Even in patients who require oxygen supplementation, if they don't need too much oxygen, CRP is around 40, 50, 60, something like that. Again, only in the most severely ill patients, the ones who end up in the ICU, does it cross 100 mg per liter. On the other hand, in bacterial pneumonia, CRP is almost always above 50, but usually above 100. So this is another variable that can help you in telling the difference between these two. But this is not where the differences stop. Take a look at this. This is a chest x-ray of a 40-year-old man with hypertension who suddenly became ill two days ago with high fever, rigors, 
chills and diarrhea. His BP is 100 over 60. He's breathing rapidly, 32 breaths per minute. So is this COVID or is it bacterial? I mean, this is a no brainer, right? Very high CRP, leukocytosis with neutrophilia, low burn pneumonia on X-ray. But notice how quickly all of this happened. Even before we see the lab results and the chest X-ray, we know that this is highly unusual for COVID pneumonia. Remember, in COVID, significant clinical deterioration starts usually after five, six, seven days of symptoms. I mean, don't get me wrong, once dyspnea does set in in COVID, then it can rapidly progress into respiratory failure within a day or two, but still, it usually starts with seemingly mild symptoms that last for days. This brutal onset is highly characteristic for bacterial pneumonia. So in addition to appearing as a complication of a preceding viral respiratory tract infection, bacterial pneumonia can do this as well. Rapid onset, rapid progression to sepsis. Notice hypotension here. So you will not see that in COVID. Even the patients with the most severe COVID pneumonia are usually able to maintain normal blood pressure for a very, very long time. I've seen many patients in the ICU with COVID pneumonia who were able to maintain normal blood pressure for weeks before they eventually crashed. So this rapid progression with signs of sepsis and septic shock, this doesn't look like COVID. This is typical for bacterial pneumonia. Speaking of rapid progression, what would you say this is? A 45-year-old man, three days of fever, but now shortness of breath, and his O2 saturation is 89% at rest, with a respiratory rate of 36 breaths per minute. Is it bacterial? Well, certainly possible, and this patient does need to be treated with antibiotics, but is this enough? Take a look at the x-ray once again. Bilateral infiltrates, interstitial, but also with consolidation. This symmetry is a little bit unusual for bacterial pneumonia, but it doesn't really fit COVID either, does it? I mean, it is bilateral, but the distribution doesn't fit and this course of illness doesn't add up either for COVID, right? Take a look at the second x-ray a day later. You can see clear progression and there is a rapid clinical deterioration as well. The patient is admitted to the ICU. So what is this? Does it help if I tell you that this happened in December? This brutal onset with bilateral infiltrates and rapid early progression into acute respiratory failure is typical for influenza pneumonia, primary influenza pneumonia. Fortunately, this type of pneumonia is very rare in most influenza seasons. However, in 2009 and then again in 2018, it was quite common. We all remember the swine flu, right? In 2018, H1N1 was once again the dominant strain. And then we saw a lot of patients with this primary influenza pneumonia. So this is different from what we see every year, which is secondary or bacterial pneumonia as a complication of influenza. We see that all the time. These are usually people over 65 with chronic diseases, and we are well prepared for this and we know what to expect. But when this hits, it catches many doctors off guard. So the thing to remember here is that we will see what happens this year or the year after that. But when we do see reports that there are many cases of primary influenza pneumonia, we should be prepared for this and we should be aware that also young and otherwise healthy people can get very severely ill, just like in COVID. So in the seasons when primary influenza pneumonia is common, you can see people in their 40s, 50s or even 30s with this with rapid onset of influenza and then rapid deterioration into respiratory failure. For you as a clinician, this is important because in addition to your standard antibiotics for the treatment of community-acquired pneumonia, you should also add antivirals for the treatment of influenza if the symptoms fit, if the x-ray fits, if you suspect that this could be primary viral influenza pneumonia. Now you might ask, Okay, why then go with antibiotics if we know it's primary influenza pneumonia? Well, in influenza, as opposed to COVID, bacterial co-infections and superinfections are very, very common. So when we treat primary influenza pneumonia, we will add antibiotics every single time. In COVID-19, co-infections and bacterial superinfections are very rare. 
Again, only the most severely ill patients, the ones who are being treated in the ICU, are at higher risk for bacterial superinfections and co-infections. And this is why for COVID pneumonia, as opposed to bacterial pneumonia and as opposed to influenza pneumonia, the guidelines recommend against the use of antibiotics. We all know by now we treat COVID-19 with corticosteroids, some other immunomodulatory, immunosuppressive and anti-inflammatory drugs. Except in the rare cases when you do have a good reason to believe that there might be a bacterial co-infection or superinfection. This is not impossible, but please remember it's very rare in COVID. In practice, there is bound to be some overlap, that's for sure. Sometimes everything is clear right from the beginning, other times it's really hard to tell what you are dealing with. There are also rare cases, rare types of pneumonia. There are non-infectious conditions masquerading as pneumonia. Of course, we cannot cover all of that in a single video. My intention here was to clearly illustrate the main differences between the most common and the most dangerous types of pneumonia that you are going to see over and over again. This ability to recognize serious infections as early as possible is what is most important in practice. And this is precisely what I teach in my free online course, because for everything else you have time and you can correct your mistakes later on. But if you miss bacterial meningitis or sepsis, there is no way back. So no matter where you work and what kind of diagnostic tests you have at your disposal, this course will help you stay out of trouble and recognize serious infections as early as possible. Thank you for watching, good luck out there and take care.